This video is the product of the Functional Cranial Release Research Institute. For difficult neurologic conditions that no one seems to have answers for, visit functionalcranialrelease.com. Um, what we're going to demonstrate here today is some, um, a breathing technique that is kind of um, a fusion of uh, Wim Hof uh, breathing, which he's also called the Iceman. I would invite you to really delve into that online. He's got lots of great um, information and videos uh, on YouTube and such, and he's got a course that you can take online, which is terrific. Um, we're going to kind of go into some of the basics that, uh, that he teaches with the breathing, and uh, we're going to also add a little spin to that. And so my ideas behind this is we're trying to stimulate the, um, the brainstem, and we're trying to stimulate the brainstem in a way that it makes the brainstem um, um, more intact, more functional, and when you stimulate aspects of the central nervous system, uh, it actually has a strengthening effect. And when areas aren't stimulating, stimulated, um, those nerves actually have a tendency to um, to to atrophy or even even die. And it's it's similar to the Chinese proverb: "The unused gate gets the rust." So. There are some very deep, primitive aspects of our central nervous system that just don't get stimulated or activated. And this is the whole concept behind Wim Hof's technique is basically going into very cold environments, doing some extreme types of breathing exercises where you're and then holding your breath and you're actually activating different types of your brainstem, which are also considered the um, reptilian brain or the primitive brain. Um, what this breathing exercise is going to do is it's going to be activating these different centers and we're going to go through a breath hold where we're going to hold an ice pack over the forehead. And what we're trying to accomplish is to activate the um, mammalian dive reflex, which is, um, for those of you that are interested in kind of the neurology behind that, we're, we're stimulating the trigeminal nucleus, which incidentally the endonasal balloon adjustments that I do here are also a very powerful stimuli to the trigeminal nucleus. But we're stimulating the trigeminal nu nucleus, which is then stimulating the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is basically going to um, lower your heart rate uh, dramatically, and it's going to decrease all of the activity in your body so that it's going to conserve oxygen. And this is in place so that we, um, if we're underwater, we have this, um, this, this, uh, this uh, automatic um, um, effect that conserves your oxygen. So it's called the dive reflex. So the way it's going to work is we're going to do thir about 30 breaths, and um, these are called conscious breaths. And we're going to take you through this process. Um, we're going to do a cycle. We're only going to do one cycle here, but what I'd like you to do at home is actually do three cycles. And after each um, cycle of 30 breaths, you're going to hold an ice pack over the bridge of your nose and the, and your, the front of your face um, for as long as you can stand it. And you're going to lay there holding your breath on the complete exhale uh, for as long as you can. And you'll start to get some spasms in your diaphragm that's basically your body saying, hey, breathe, we need oxygen. Um, so you want to hold it at first as comfortably as you could and then as you've done this re repeatedly over time start to kind of dig a little bit deeper holding the breath and you will find that on your second and third breath hold that you'll be able to hold your breath longer and longer. Um, um, I think you've been able to hold your breath up to what three and a half minutes now? Oh I got to, I got to three. Okay, yeah, so three, the third, yeah. which, which is pretty amazing because I think Houdini's longest breath hold was three and a half minutes. And he was well known for doing some extreme things. So um, my breath hold is over four minutes at this point, and you know I know some people are getting even above that. So there are some really neat benefits to your body's ability to conserve oxygen better, to utilize oxygen better. Um, this we know is going to spill over into the central nervous system. Um, the repetitive breaths are going to be super alkalizing. The blood, and we know that a very alkaline 
um, fluid is going to be easier for oxygen to penetrate into. So we're really super oxygenating the body, but also the central nervous system. And at the same time, we're stimulating it. So oxygenation plus stimulation um, is, is really the recipe, I believe, for a healing that could occur. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to do this every morning. And um, my email is askdrjl at gmail.com. And after you've done this for a week or two, I'd love to hear your feedback on how it's working for you. It dramatically decreases your stress level, which is helping you kind of cope with the disease a little bit more. Um, sadly, a lot of people may actually have to make the trip here to Florida or some other functional chiropractic neurologist that's able to, um, to do this work for you. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a complete inhale in, fully in and then you're going to relax the lungs, okay? And then full inhale in, and then relax the lungs. And what I'm looking for is when you completely inhale, there's no pause from the time that you completely inhale and you relax the lungs. And then once you relax the lungs, you're letting the air out. Once all of the air relax, relaxedly exits the lungs, then you're completely inhale again. And that cycle between the inhale and the exhale is fluid. So there's no pause at the top of the inhale and there's no pause at the bottom of the exhale. Okay? It's, some people call it a circular breath. And we're going to do this conscious circular breath and try to feel for that upper limit. What you'll find is as you do more of these breathing exercises, you're actually going to expand the rib cage. And in order to expand the rib cage, which is going to expand your ability to absorb oxygen and, and bring in oxygen, you need to um, stretch that out. So there's a number of other techniques that you can do, but certainly while you're doing these breathing exercises, go ahead and, and reach into that full inhale. So what's happening with Colton here is he's outgassing all of his CO2, and CO2 is very acidic in the blood. So let's do 10 more good ones. So 30 is kind of a benchmark. Some people may need to do more, some people less. And what's going to happen is you're going to start to feel some tingling sensation. Could be in your face, your arms, your hands, your feet, um, around your chest. And this is basically um, respiratory alkalosis that you're going into. Now, Colton, when you get to your, your 30 breaths, I want you to take a full breath in, and then I want you to exhale everything, and I want you to hold your breath on that exhale. And then we're going to place an ice pack right over the face. So when you're in this state, on the complete exhale, it's important to just relax every part of your body because we don't want to waste any oxygen. And you'll find that you'll hold tension in certain parts of your body, especially when you first start these exercises, you'll notice that there's certain tense areas. And even when you're breathing, you'll feel there's certain areas that are you have blockages. And you might find a lot of those blockages in the throat, especially for people with you know the disease of palatal monoclonus and breathe into that and relax into that with the breath hold. So, let's see if this ice pack stays. Okay, good. One of the things that Wim Hof also talks about is the um, colors in the uh, third eye area and don't feel bad if you don't experience that, but with more practice, what a lot of people notice is when they are doing the breathing exercises and even the breath hold, that they start to see or experience colors kind of in this third eye. And this is the pineal gland kind of waking up. And we know that the pineal gland has a tendency to become calcified in uh, our modern society. And so, bringing focus and blood flow to that pineal gland can be um, very powerful for a lot of 
aspects of not only our health but our um, our, our consciousness spiritually. And what I would suggest, he's starting to get some contractions here in the in the diaphragm. You can go much longer than you think with this. Um, you have to fight some of these contractions in the diaphragm a bit. Um, but the blood oxygen can lower much lower. There you go. Good job. Two minutes, 30 seconds. So now after that, that breath hold, there's a complete inhale, and he's going to hold between 10 and 15 seconds. And then the cycle begins again. There's the complete inhale, the relaxation, and this is done three times. And um, again, um, I would invite you to experiment with this at home. Um, don't do this in water. Uh, don't do this while you're driving. Please do this either laying down on a yoga mat. We have him on a chiropractic table here. Uh, you could do it sitting as well. That would be acceptable. Um, it is possible that um, you could get dizzy while you're doing these exercises. Um, do them in the morning on an empty stomach is another um, trick. Uh, it's more difficult to hold your breath when your body's actually spending energy digesting food. And I think just the exercise of the diaphragm and the, the organs with the breath work is more effective on an empty stomach. To this. Once you're done with the three breaths, I would invite you to stay in whatever space that you're in and meditate for, for 10 to 15 minutes. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to bring your attention to this area, kind of around the third eye, and you're going to also be just kind of focused just on your breath. So you're not thinking about all the different things that you need to do that day. You're not thinking about the things that you should have done the day before. You know, you're kind of quieting the mind. And don't be hard on yourself if your mind starts to wander, but then when you catch yourself, bring your attention back to that breath. So basically it's a breath-centered meditation, and you'll find it's much easier to, to have that meditation after these breathing exercises, but let's make it part of this plan that we do. We do the, the breathing, and then we do the 10 to 15 minutes of meditation. And there's lots of great um, studies that are showing that um, 10 to 15 minutes of meditation actually has a profound impact on a lot of different brain-based diseases. So this is not really far-fetched that this, this would help you. Okay. So again, email me, let me know. Um, you'll be able to reach out to both me and Colton on uh, Facebook um, and kind of follow up on his progress. He's been here for, for four days um, so far. It seems like the the um, you know the condition is 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 resolved or cured at this point. Um, so thank you. Hi, this is Dr. John. Thanks for joining me. If you or a loved one suffers from difficult neurologic conditions that no one seems to have answers for, send them to functionalcranialrelease.com. You can contact me by phone or email me at askdrjl at gmail.com. And remember, if healing is possible, consider it to be within your reach. Bye for now. FunctionalCranialRelease.com